Hey there, folks. Welcome back to Tristan Cardboard. And today, we are convinced we have found five games that will make you a better board gamer. Maybe to you, that means consistently getting higher and higher scores. Or maybe you just want to play more board games and just pick them up faster and get better at them quicker so you don't get slapped by your friends. Either way, uh, this list should help you. Stick around. So your number one question to us might be our number one question to each other when we thought this up, which was, wouldn't any game make you a better board gamer? Yes, but the long answer is kind of. Let me explain. Some games are really good at teaching you how to play that game. Take Castles of Burgundy, for example, where it's such a unique game, there's not much else like it. Whereas if you were to learn a game like Cascadia, which has tile laying, abstract strategy, you can apply those principles to so many other games. Just like Cascadia, these five other games fit into the same criteria that will make you a better board gamer. First off, the game has to focus on one core mechanic that it really hones in on, so you can really learn that one, which will then apply to other games. Secondly, the game can't be too heavy because there's going to be too much that you're going to be focused on to really learn that skill that the game's trying to teach you. The third criteria here is the game can't take too long to play. If it does, you're not going to play it enough times to really see the rapid improvement we're looking for. The fourth criteria is that the mechanic the game teaches you has to apply to as many games as possible so that you see the most value out of learning that mechanic. Lastly, these games have to actually be available for purchase, otherwise they wouldn't be good recommendations. Now, let's get into the list. Now to some of you, this might be a surprise, but our first game is... Flamecraft. Flamecraft is a very simple worker placement and order fulfillment game. Essentially, all you're doing is taking your dragon, placing it on a shop, gaining resources from that shop, purchasing enchantments with those resources, upgrading the shop, scoring points, and then you just repeat the process. So Flamecraft is really good at introducing this optimization puzzle where basically you're constantly choosing whether you should increase the amount of resources you gain per action or gaining those resources to spend them on victory points. This is a game cycle that while in its basic form here is implemented in a much more advanced way in lots of heavier games. Lacerda games, Brass Birmingham being the number one game of all time, that sort of thing. And this mentally prepares you for those games really well. Another great thing Flamecraft has going for it is that the theme is really approachable and is super friendly for people of all ages, really. If you're looking for other games like this that will help you teach similar mechanics, Lords of Waterdeep is a great option, shown up here, or you can grab Parks, which is shown right here. The next game that'll make you a better board gamer is Point City. Point City is a pure engine builder where you're going to be over the course of three phases collecting resources to then build buildings which give you permanent resources that you can then use to build more buildings and score more points by the end of the game. Each turn you're going to be drafting two orthogonally adjacent cards. For example, this turn I might take the energy and community. When I do, those resources become available to me and get replaced with flipped cards that represent buildings. In this case, the ice cream truck and ATM. If I were in this position, I would have one industry and one economy. If it was my turn, I might try to take this industry and buy this tiny home, which costs one industry and one economy, pay those two resources, and gain one permanent community for the rest of the game. Outside of permanent resources, when you build a building, it can give you permanent victory points as well for the end of the game. For example, this ice cream truck gives a permanent ecology, but also gives you one victory point. This is the basis of all of Point City across all three eras. Point City is a great game for learning engine optimization. If you don't get your engine going early, then you're going to get left behind. But because Point City plays in only about 30 minutes, you're going to be able to iterate over and over and over again really quickly and learn those skills. This is going to help immensely with games like Terraforming Mars, Earth, and Race for the Galaxy. Okay, so our next game that will make you a better board gamer is Everdell. Everdell is a staple in the board gaming hobby, focusing on mechanics like worker placement, tableau building, and resource management. So in Everdell, how am I supposed to talk through this thing? <laughs> like actually, you know what, does, it, does anyone even play with this? Okay, screw the tree. So in Everdell, each turn you are either placing a worker or playing a card. When you place a worker, you're doing so to either draw up cards, gain various resources like wood, resin, stone, or berries, or play cards into your tableau. Playing cards into your tableau will cost various resources, but give you certain bonuses, such as victory points, round-by-round -round bonuses to resources, or worker placement locations. Everdell is a game that is a bit of a mishmash of different mechanics, but for our purposes today, we're going to focus on the tableau building. 
After a few plays, Everdell becomes a bit of an optimization puzzle. You're going to be actively seeking through both the meadow and the deck for matching pairs of cards. For example, if you get the castle and you play that, you can then play the king and it costs you nothing. On top of that puzzle, Everdell has a maximum tableau space of a 5x3 grid. So you're trying to squeeze out as many points as possible in that space using those combinations. Everdell's tableau building, when combined with the super tight resource management you run into, helps you improve at other games like Agricola, Caverna, uh, Dwellings of Eldervale, anything like that. Our next game that will make you a better board gamer is a racing game called Heats. Heat is a racing game for one to six players. Essentially, what you're doing is you're racing around a track, trying to get over the finish line as fast as possible and before your opponents. In this racing game, you will be managing your own deck of cards that is the exact same as your opponents and trying to push your luck and manage that deck of cards and the heat stored in your engine to be as successful as possible. You're gonna do so by using your deck of cards and more specifically the hand of seven cards you have at any point in time. The corners are the part of this game that really give you that crunch and that learning process. Basically, anytime you go through a corner, depending on the speed you go through it, you can choose to take on heat and go further through the corner by playing higher cards from your hand. When you boil this game down, what it really becomes is a turn optimization puzzle. There's a number of turns each player will take before the entire group reaches the finish line for the second time, and you're trying to minimize that number of turns to basically get ahead of the rest of the competition. Besides just being so much fun, Heat is an amazing game for teaching you how to manage a deck of cards. You're gonna have what's in your hand, you're gonna have what's in your discard pile, and then what's coming up from your draw pile. Learning how to manage a deck of cards in a game like Heat also teaches you how to play better at games like Clank, Lost Ruins of Arnak, or even Dune Imperium. Okay, so the next game on this list is definitely the heaviest one, but for good reason, and it is Inish. There are other lighter area control games that would teach you the general basics of area control, something like El Grande, for example, but the skills that you learn in those games don't convert to other games as well as the skills you learn in Inish. So Inish is not your usual area control, area majority type of game. You interface with the game mainly through these action cards, which you're drafting each round. What sets Inish apart is the skills required to win apply to pretty much every other area control game. In Inish, there are three different paths to victory. Being in control of your opponent's units, being in different locations, and being present where there are different objectives. One of the reasons why Inish is such a good game for learning area control is because essentially all you're doing is you're placing your troops on the map, you're moving those troops from territory to territory, trying to fight with your opponent, or just be there to try and control those territories. Learning how to move around a board and use your troops and use your control to win you the game. These are core aspects that are common amongst almost every single area control game that's out there. All right, that is five games that will make you a better board gamer. And we have some exciting news. What is it, John? Well, this took us a long time to make. Yes, it did. Uh, it was over the course of three weeks because yeah. we were at Breakout Con. Yep. Um, so firstly, thank you so much for a thousand subscribers because of you conventions like that are possible. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we got to interview uh, Eric M. Lang yes, at we Breakout did. Con. So yeah. that will be a video coming up soon. And in honor of both of those things, we're mm -hmm. going to be giving away a copy of Ankh in yes, this video. Such a good if you'd game. like to win a copy of Ankh, just comment down below why you think you should win. Mm -hmm. uh, you can subscribe to the channel for an extra entry, but it's not mandatory. Yep. The maximum entries you can have is two. And we'll be pulling a winner at the end of our Eric Lang interview video, which should come out within the next couple weeks. Yes. Anyway, thanks so much. If you'd like to chat to us, we've created a new Discord. The link is in the description. Yep. Come say hello, and we'll catch you next time. I'm John. I'm Jeff. And you're watching Chits and Cardboard. Signing out. Later.